Hello, I hope that you are all safe and well. This short video is summarising the information that was sent out in the letter to all families at lunchtime on the 3rd of January and is in relation to us all coming back to school arrangements for Tuesday the 4th of January, Wednesday the 5th of January and where we currently stand in relation to COVID. I hope that you all had a fantastic Christmas holiday and a great new year and that you're looking forward to all the opportunities and the challenges that this year will bring. We are still in the scenario where COVID-19 is an issue that we need to manage, we need to think about and we need to mitigate and to deal with. It's really important that families understand that there is risk in all that we do, but that what we're trying to do is to balance that risk and ensure that all young people have access to everything that they need in their education or career here at Oak Grove. It's important that we see that it is a community effort to reduce that risk and that all of us have a part to play to ensure that that risk is as reduced as humanly possible. Testing and ventilation remain absolutely key to what we are doing. It is absolutely important that we are using lateral flow tests and that we are taking those on Sundays and Wednesdays, as we have been doing for the whole of this academic year so far. I know that lateral flow tests have been difficult to come by recently. If you want to collect some, you will be able to do that tomorrow between nine and three o'clock. Tomorrow is also um, the opportunity for you to come in to be tested if you are part of our testing programme in school. It's also important for us to remember and to understand that if you are showing symptoms of COVID, you need to immediately isolate and get a PCR test. An LFT does not check for COVID in relation to symptomatic COVID. It only checks in relation to asymptomatic COVID. So if you are showing those traditional symptoms of a high temperature, change in sense of taste and smell or a persistent cough, you need to isolate and get a PCR test. If you test positive on a lateral flow test, you need to isolate and book a PCR test. From my point of view, it makes it far easier if you can do it in a walkthrough or drive through centre because we get those results back far quicker and that enables us to do track and trace work in school. Can I also ask you, because ventilation is so important, to make sure students are properly dressed and have a coat with them. It's important also to recognise that staff are testing and that we are going to be following the social care and health guidance, which means that those colleagues who test positive for COVID will continue with day eight, nine and ten lateral flow testing when they return from isolation, in addition to the new recommendations for day six and seven testing. If we do and it's probably likely that it's when we do have positive cases in school, if they're directly linked to your young person, we will email you. And there's also important understandings we've got to have in terms of changes to self-isolation. It's now seven days that you isolate for, but you do have to be organised because you have to take an LFT test on day six and that has to be negative and you have to take an LFT test on day seven, which releases you on day eight, provided you don't have a temperature and you don't still feel unwell. If you still have a temperature or feel unwell, you need to continue and do the full 10 days isolation. If a student cannot do the day six or seven lateral flow tests, then they have to do the full 10 day isolation. If your young person is a close contact of a positive case, you will get an email from us. And we used to say in that email, can you organise them to have a PCR test? We are now following the new government guidance going to be saying, can they do a lateral flow test every day for the next seven days? If your young person cannot do a lateral flow test because they cannot tolerate it, it is OK for the rest of the household to do that as a substitute. I need to be clear, though, it is the rest of the household that need to be able to do that, not some of the household. 
Tomorrow, we will be looking at testing on site. The DfE wants schools to be able to offer testing on site that our secondary age students go to. And so these are the timings that we will be looking for young people coming in. The idea behind this is that A, they're testing before they get on transport because we're asking you to bring them in. That means that we're reducing the risks of passing it around on the transport system. Secondly, it also means that those results are with us straight away. Please stick to your times as much as you possibly can. We'll also, as I said earlier on, going to be allowing families to come in and collect lateral flow packs. If you haven't timed up for our testing programme, that's fine. You can still come in and collect a lateral flow um, pack from us while we've still got them. It's really important that you register the test result because that's how we as a school can then order more once we've used all of ours up. If we don't register those test results, then actually what happens is it just shows that we've been issued with lots of tests that haven't been used. Masks, you will have seen in the news recently that the government is now recommending that all students of secondary age who can tolerate it should wear masks in communal areas and in classrooms and we would ask those young people that can do that to do that. Staff will also be wearing masks when it's appropriate for them to do so and when they are moving around the school or in close contact with students. The challenge we've got now is that the new variant of COVID-19 Omicron is easily transmissible really easily transmissible. So that means the chances and we can see that for the number of infections that are being reported every day over the last couple of weeks um, are incredibly high. Um, from an off-site visits point of view, to reduce potential contacts, off-site visits will be to outside locations or to leisure facilities where we can adequately distance from other groups. Um, we are still planning at this point to carry on with the Lion King. It's really important to give our young people those opportunities. However, we need to be clear that if we have to take additional measures going forward in the next few weeks, that could have an impact on the Lion King. And um, family consultation evenings will also continue to happen at the end of the month, but they will be online. And it looks like that's going to be an issue for the foreseeable future. And annual reviews for HCPs will continue to be online. And in terms of staffing, um, that's going to potentially be a challenge. Um, we will do absolutely everything we can to avoid disruption to teaching and learning. We have a well-equipped programme on our website to support home learning for all young people if that is required. Our challenge, particularly with people who test positively, who are completely asymptomatic, is that disruption, which will happen at some point, will come last minute. So please, please make sure we have got your up to date. Uh, email addresses, please, please check that we have got your up to date mobile phone numbers and home phone numbers. Um, we will normally be using email when there are groups of people that we need to contact simply because that is easier and we can see that those messages have been delivered. So please, the email addresses that you have given to us, check regularly. And I really do think actually that's a sort of a morning and an evening job to do that, because when we're making decisions or we get information through, will be fundamentally when test results for people come through. So we're having to respond to them quickly. Sometimes that's quite late at night or incredibly early in the morning. So it's important that you do please check all your communication methods. We are looking forward to seeing everybody back on Wednesday. We are looking forward to it being as normal as humanly possible for 2022. And I wish you all a very happy and healthy new year. Thank you for your continuing hard work and support of the whole Oak Grove community.